G'day guys and welcome to the first episode of World of Tint. My name is Trav Lang and I'm going to be your host for the channel. I've started this channel because I've seen a lot of uh, Facebook and, and different sort of posts around the area on struggling tinters on how to get started and what tools to use and different processes. So I thought I'd just share the love. I've had 30 years of experience so far in the world of tint and um, just plan on giving you guys some of that knowledge. So what we're going to do for this channel is you're going to meet lots of different installers, you're going to see different techniques, you're going to see different setups, you're going to see my setup in a minute, and um, hopefully it makes you guys successful. So uh, I encourage you guys to at least get most or part of the tools that I've got here as my setup because I'll be using them frequently when I make more videos. Um, it doesn't cost a lot of money to use. Uh, I reckon an estimated setup, including a heat gun, might cost you two or three hundred bucks at most. So for most trades, it's quite cheap to get into. So without further ado, let's get started and get into it. Alrighty, so as you can see, we've got a quite comprehensive uh, selection of tools to use. Um, it's not everything in my kit, but it is most of the things that you will use at least on a weekly basis just to get you out of trouble. Now, the first thing I'm going to get started with is I see a lot of guys out there squeegeeing windows with a Fusion Turbo or something like that. Use it, but don't clean your windows with it. It's just not as efficient as using a squeegee like this. I've had this Satoro squeegee for about 25 years. It's brass and it's never let me down. I use Satoro squeegee rubbers all the time. I don't use anything else because I find that they are quite soft to use. Um, but they also last as well and look at the end of the day they cost nothing to replace and you can flip them over they're reversible once you wear out one side you just basically slip it out turn it around and use the other side as well so start off with a squeegee when you're cleaning windows secondly is we will hard press our film out with a blue max squeegee um, I've tried many many other different tools over the years but I've found the blue max is generally my go-to all the time um, you can, uh, with, we'll do a tool maintenance video later on, you can shave them down, get a little bit more life out of it as well, but use a blue max with a handle and a hard press to squeeze out as much water as you can. Um, now, the other thing that we use frequently for rear screens is what we call a side swiper. You will need a side swiper to reach down the bottom of rear screens on sedans and that sort of thing. And also you'll use a thing called a Conqueror. Uh, Conqueror is also for tight sections at the bottom of rear screens where, where you can't get your side swiper in. You'll use that a lot as well. Now, another amazing tool that you wanna put in your kit is what they call an Easy Reach, Platinum Easy Reach. Uh, very, very good. You just need to keep them sanded. They do scratch, uh, so you need to be careful of that. But you can also use the other end here, the shorter end. I use it for European cars where you don't want to put a scraper, which is here. We scrape the windows clean with uh, a scraper and I always use stainless blades in that. But European cars, you want to use basically a plastic scraper because they do tend to scratch, especially um, like Range Rovers or anything with triple X on the bottom of the glass. You'll find that the glass is very soft and there's also a lot of import cars, like I know Toyota have a couple where they have a coating on the inside of the glass and if you put a blade on it, you'll just destroy it. So you'll need to basically educate yourself on those sort of vehicles, anything European or an import, especially from Japan, has a coating on the glass and you will need to use a plastic scraper. Uh, now, a sponge, you'll need a sponge to scrub the windows clean. Um, this is a very, very good tool. It's a clay bar. Um, occasionally, I will use it for cleaning rear screens on the demisters. It saves you from using steel wool. Um, steel wool is still a necessity at times, especially for removal and refit. Um, but more often than not, I've, my go-to is a clay bar, but stubborn demisters where it's sort of gunked up and it's got a lot of, um, a lot of sort of basically contamination on the, on the bars from over the years. You'll need to use this, and if this fails, just use your steel wool. Uh, I use a Sharpie. We'll go through that at some stage for rear screens and some tape. I've got a large Stanley here. We will use that when I teach you guys how to shave the top edge of your windows certain sections you will need a larger Stanley. Um, we've got some tape here, we've got a tape measure, uh, steel wool like I said, 
great for cleaning rear screens or uh, sections where you've got micro dots, which is the black dots that run down the side of um, frameless cars like BMWs and that sort of thing. I use steel wool for that. And whenever I get steel wool, I always cut it off with a pair of scissors because when you tear it apart, all the fibers sort of go everywhere and it creates more contamination that you need th th than you need. So I always cut them off with a pair of scissors. And every time that you do use steel wool before you squeegee the glass, I always kind of mop it up or clean up the window with some paper towel. And I've got that from Costco. Uh, other tools that we've got here, uh, this is the scrubber, basically for deep rear screens that you can't reach, especially down the bottom, just to agitate the dirt and debris that's sort of stuck down the bottom. And you will also need to get a bulldozer just to reach the bottom of rear screens as well. It's a very, very useful tool. Uh, like I said, the Fusion hand job, love that name. Um, this is very, very useful for once we've applied the film to the glass, just to squeegee out as much surface area of the film as you can to stop it from moving. If we're, we'll start off when we start tinting, we will cut, cut the window true to the top of the glass, bump it up, line it up. And this is a great tool just to get some surface area down on the, on, the, on the film so that it doesn't move so that you can later on use your hard press and, and get it down for good. Um, now, other tools we use, we'll use a shrinking card. I see a lot of guys using um, like hard cards, like something as hard as what this, um, what this Platinum Easy Reach is. Don't, don't, um, don't, don't push the film down when you're heat shrinking with anything hard because you're likely to crease it. Always use, just use a soft card. There is a thing called a Mac tack as well. It's quite thick, a lot of the installers love using it. I just prefer using something like this. Uh, now, squeegeeing down the side of the, the channels with door glasses, I love using this. This is a, a contour card. This particular one is the green one, so it's quite soft. As of yet, touch wood, I haven't scratched anything with this yet, so this is a very, very useful tool. It's quite thin, and it will reach right into the side channels to squeegee out the water. Um, now, as far as blades, uh, some installers use carbon blades for um, cutting out the film and that sort of thing. I just found that cross-contamination and working out what, what blades carbon and what blades stain, stainless, unless you've got particular knives, just use, just use stainless. Especially when we start to shave windows, I've found that stainless are better, only because the carbon blades are quite hard. And when you trim or shave a window, you almost kind of want to put a little bit of a notch in the blade. You almost kind of want to damage the blade a little bit just to sink the blade into the top of the glass so that you can get that consistent cut and it doesn't start sliding around. Um, scraping, when you are scraping, we've got these gem blades. Um, they are very, very good. They are stainless steel blades as well. I try to stay away from carbon. Um, carbon, like I said, they are a harder blade and they do tend to scratch at times. Now, with your uh, side channel squeegees, you can get what they call a 3M gold card. I cut them down for various sizes, like I've cut this one down. They start off as um, a rectangle. You can cut them down to any size you like. We've even got little ones here for quarter glass windows as well. Um, now, with tinting, with your slip solutions, I tend to use two bottles. I use one for cleaning and one for installing. I have quite a soapy mix when I'm cleaning, um, just to agitate. And when I go to squeegee the glass clean, it just helps the squeegee rubber glide across the glass and it doesn't sort of get stuck and start sort of jittering across the glass. And then when I do my installs and flushing and peeling of the window film, I use a less soapy mix, just depending on obviously the climate and if it's summer or winter or what particular film I'm using. Some films are quite aggressive with the adhesive, so you need to up your soap solution, soap solution for that. Um, when we get started and we are lining things up, sometimes things don't line up perfectly, especially in the corners. So I encourage you to get yourself a contact points file. A lot of tinters still like using a file. I did start using a file when I first started learning, but once you learn to shave, you just never go back. You just, unless you've got a, a window that's quite rough on the top edge, which is where I'll always go to with my file. If it's got a bit of a divot missing in the top edge of the glass, if it's, if it's damaged for any reason, use a file for that. 
Um, the soap solution that I that I sort of basically go to don't use a dishwashing liquid. Um, they do have detergents and that sort of thing, so it will break down in adhesive over time. So at the moment, I use the uh, Fusion All Type solution. It's not a plug; it's just what I use. Um, now, as far as tools for removing door trims and that sort of thing, um, you've probably most likely seen these sort of tools here. They are very, very handy. And I've recently got myself one of these uh, trim tools, and I also use it for cleaning the side channels, which we'll go to at a later date as well. We pop a rag around it and clean up the side channels with that, so it's just very, very useful. Um, now, when we start shrinking, I dry shrink a lot, well, mainly dry shrink with rear screens, and I'll always use a glove as well. So we'll teach you guys how to use a glove efficiently and how to use a heat gun efficiently. Uh, you also need some wind-up tape. Once you've finished your job, it's good to put some wind-up tape on the window switches just so customers don't wind it down for a couple of days or a day or so. Um, now, the other useful little tool is what we call a chiseler. Chiselers, basically when you do have, have those little tiny little dots, you might have one or two in a window, it's just easy to just push it down, it's quite a hard card. Just keep it sort of sanded a little bit because it can scratch the film, but just so basically just for pushing down the odd little dot here and there. Um, and then finally, I think we're coming down to knives. Uh, I use a stainless knife um, for cutting out my window film and for the life of me I cannot find my trimming knife it's a plastic knife and I use a plastic knife for trimming so that when I do trim if the knife does slip or the angle is too deep then the edge of the knife here doesn't score the top of the film um, and we'll go through that at a later date as well now I think finally we're basically down to heat gun um, now, I can't recommend the Steinle heat gun enough. I've used many, many heat guns over the years. The best heat gun I've had over the years has been a Makita, which unfortunately they don't make anymore, that particular one. Um, I think it was the HG 1100 by, by memory. Uh, this is basically what it was like. It's just a fantastic heat gun. It's a Steinle HL220. I know a, a lot of rap guys love using this and there is a rap version with like a two or three metre cord on it. Very, very good heat gun and it's digital so that you can dial it down. So if you are working with me and following this program, I can tell you what temperatures to use um, for different heat settings, different shrinking of windows, that sort of thing. Uh, I use different heat setting when I pull shrink versus when I just dry shrinks but in a normal way. Um, and I think that really basically covers everything. Now, last but not least, unfortunately, you are going to need to get yourself a packet of Band-Aids because it's inevitable and I've got a few scars to prove it. So uh, hopefully that was helpful. It's a bit of an insight on what, what I'm going to use to start the program. I'm going to go and catch up with a couple of other installers and have a look at what they've got and why they use it. And um, we'll get this channel up and going for you. Catch you later.